You're on mute, Brother Knox. I think you can hear me now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being here on this Good Friday. And uh, we had services last night, went well with Minister Esther, followed by me tonight. And uh, we will have sunrise service, uh, 7.30. Sunday, followed by 12 noon Easter service with Pastor Thomas Jr., our pastor. So join us in this Holy Week services. Be a part of all of them. Uh, our souls will be blessed. Uh, kids will bless you as well Sunday at our 12 noon service. Uh, so we look forward for you being a part of everything that we're doing in this Holy Week. Let us pray. Lord, we remember today the pain and the suffering of the cross and all that Jesus was willing to endure so we could be set free. He paid the price, such a great sacrifice to offer us the gift of eternal life. Help us never to take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf Help us to be reminded of the cause of it all. Forgive us for being too busy or distracted by other things, for not fully recognizing what you've freely given and what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you that because of your huge sacrifice, we can live free. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered and that your power is everlasting. Thank you that we can say with, our, with great hope, it is finished. For we know what's still to come and death has lost its sting. We give praises to you for you are making all things new. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. We will have our scripture now by Minister Esther. Good evening, church. Our scripture today is Mark 15, 21 through 25, the crucifixion of Jesus. I read from the New International Version. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called 
Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will now have uh, music. Uh, we do not own the copyright to this music. It is non-copyrighted. It is strictly for the purpose of worship.
Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. I, I played that song. I had that song played because we're talking about the crucifixion on this Good Friday of our Lord and Savior. But I, I, I wanted to, uh, for us to recognize that um, he lived. He died for us, but he rose again, and he lives for us. And because of that, we have a chance at ever. Last, lasting life. So the question today as we celebrate Good Friday, what is so good about Friday, Good Friday? Why do we celebrate it? You heard read uh, Mark 15, 21 through 25, and 25 say it was the night, it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. We uh, go around and I know you've heard it on your jobs, you heard it or heard someone on your job say, thank God is Friday. Pretty common saying. To say, thank God is Friday. But normally that means pay that means payday. And normally that means you got the next two days off. So you hear that pretty frequently. Thank God is Friday. But the, but but they only use the word thank God as long as they are getting Friday. Uh, the weekend off, and as long as they're getting paid, because that's the only time they really give God, a lot of time give God thanks for what they receive for their weekly pay. What is so good about this particular Friday? Friday is the day that Jesus Christ died upon the cross. So this Friday is the only true Good Friday. Good Friday also marks the end of an era. The old is out, and the new is in. As a result of Christ's death, we can now have freedom from bondage. The bondage as slaves of the devil or sin, we have the opportunity now to start all over again with the clean slate as sons and daughters of a living God. And as we celebrate this Good Friday, I want to take us back to the last uh, words that Jesus said on the cross. What are the last words of Jesus? We are referring to those seven last sayings recorded across the Gospels that Jesus said before, before finally dying on the cross. These words have powerful meaning and significance because they were the last words of Jesus that each Gospel writer decided to share. First say, Father, forgive them. When Jesus cries out in prayer to the Father God and asks him to forgive them for they know not what they do. He was looking past the, the atrocity uh, that these men were committing against him and seeing them as people. Jesus sees past the sin and can see our need for healing and forgiveness. Father, forgive them. Today we will be with, second saying was today you will be with me in paradise. In this statement, Jesus expressed the assurance and comfort 
to the repentant criminal. Despite the crucifixion agony, Jesus offered this man hope and forgiveness. The assurance that the criminal that today, meaning immediately after their deaths, they both were in a paradise together. God's awesome. Jesus is awesome. That even in the midst of his agony, he still was doing God's work. Third saying, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus uttered these words during the last hours. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This moment is thought to be when Jesus completed a strange miracle on our behalf. He is crying out because he is experiencing separation from his father for the first time. And this is the only time that we have a record of Jesus not addressing God as father. But he said, my God, my God. I believe that as Jesus hung there at at this moment, he was bearing the sins of the world. He was dying as a substitute for us. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the fourth saying is, woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. You, <clears throat> it was believed that he was talking to John his beloved friend. And in this moment, Jesus, despite enduring immense suffering himself, demonstrated his concern for the well-being of his mother, Mary, earthly mother, Mary, by entrusting her care to a beloved disciple, John. Jesus fulfilled his duty as a devoted son in ensuring that Mary would be looked after in his absence. The fifth saying, I'm thirsty. Jesus experienced real, unimaginable physical suffering. His, he experienced pain, hunger, and thirst. I cannot contemplate what Jesus would have felt during this last day on earth. It can be comforting to remember that God emphasizes, He knows. We have physical needs. In Matthew 6, 25 through 34, Jesus reminds us not to worry. Jesus says, don't worry because your God already knows you have physical needs. And this and is at work helping you to meet those needs. So sometimes we get so impatient with God and we get so caught up and busy in our lives that we forget to thirst for God's word and thirst for God's guidance and thirst for God's help. And we go about until our backs are against the wall until we have absolutely no other option before we are turned to our Father in heaven. But imagine if you would take the time to thirst after God, not the thirst that the people thought around Jesus on the cross thought that he was emphasizing. That wasn't the thirst. It was the thirst for his father, just like we should be thirsting for the father here on earth, the way Jesus thirsted for it. And being obedient to God's word, thirsting for it. If you go, uh, you just say you go on vacation and you, you take time off and you don't, um, have your Bible, by the time you get back from vac vacations, you'll be so thirsty for God's word and thirsty for God's guidance and thirsty for what you have missed out on uh, trying to relax and enjoy yourself. And so you should be like that each and every day. Like we've had the uh, uh, meditation and during Lent season, the prayer during Lent season, uh, the the uh, scripture and even a song that fit with uh, the meditation. And so it has uh, 
has drove a thirst in our uh, congregation to want to have that on a daily basis. So hopefully what has happened in this season has refreshed, restarted, re-kicked our thirst to have God's word each and every day because this has been awesome. I thirst. The six said, it is finished. Now, this word that Jesus uh, 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 said here, it is finished. Uh, 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 and, and the Greek um, translation, it is tetalistai. And that means complete. Jesus is indicating that his work is fulfillment of the scripture in his life he has completed his work on earth has fully and has fully offered himself the ultimate sacrifice in our place for our sins now see there's a difference in what jesus said on the cross when he said it's finished the difference is with jesus it was complete we say finished here on earth, and it really don't mean finished. Say, for instance, you all have you experienced this on the job when somebody's like, comes to you, I'm finished, I'm done, I'm done. It just means they're done for the day. That's not, he didn't finish what he started out. He's just done. He's through. He's tired, or she's tired, and she's on, not going to do it anymore until tomorrow. So that's a, that's a difference in the way we look at finish here on earth. Sometimes it means complete. Some, a lot of times it just means we're done for the day. Jesus said it is finished and he had fulfilled the, the scripture. He had fulfilled the prophecy. He had fulfilled everything that God sent him here to finish. It was complete. He was the ultimate sacrifice. And he took it on the cross in place of ourselves. In the final saying, Father, into my hands I commit my spirit. When we look at Matthew 26, 36 to 56, when Jesus is praying and fervently in the garden, and Jesus asked the Father to take this cup of suffering from him. But when, but then ask, not my will, but your will be done. And he was obedient to the will of God and accepted the suffering of the cross because he knew this was the Father's will for him. In Luke 23, 46, Jesus says, Father, into my hands I commend my spirit. Jesus entirely, entirely surrendered his body, his soul to his father. This is what we are called to do as Christians. Give ourselves to God. Can, can, can we say that we've done that? Can we truly say that we have surrendered our bodies and soul to God completely? and giving ourselves completely to God to do his will here on earth. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds we're healed. Thank you, Lord, for hanging on the cross, suffering for us, dying for us, so that we have a chance at everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus, for making the ultimate sacrifice for us in spite of ourselves. Thank you, God, in, in, in spite of how they treated you, in spite of how they mocked you, in spite of how they spit on you, in spite of how they beat you, you didn't say a mumbling word. You did God's will. And you allow us to have a chance at everlasting life because of what you did. Because of what you did, Father, you, you allowed your son to die in our place. And because he lives now, we have a chance 
to face tomorrow. I hope something that was said tonight, hope something that was sung, hope something that was said in the prayer that lifts your spirit as we celebrate Good Friday. Being that it was not good because of our brother in Christ, our uh, Savior had to die on this day or hang on a cross on this day. But give God the praise that in three days he rose. And because he lives today, we have a chance to face tomorrow. God bless you. God keep you. God face smile upon you. And may God give you peace. Remember to be, continue to be a part of Holy Week. Uh, Sunday morning, sunrise service at 7.30 a.m. Followed by noon service, Easter service. We will be uh, Facebooking. I mean, yes, it'll be on Facebook. Uh, we'll be screaming it. Um, Zoom and Facebook Sunday morning as well as Sunday afternoon Facebook. So we ask you to be a part of our Holy Week. Continue to uh, pray for us and we'll continue to pray for you. God bless you and God keep you.